Hi guys. Hi guys. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist um, in York. Um, and um, over the past few months, I've been doing some videos really to deal with things like ectopic heartbeats and palpitations, which seem to cause a lot of people a lot of bother. And uh, one of the uh, one of the girls who's been um, listening to my uh, video blogs uh, asked me today um, uh, if I could do a video on magnesium and the effect it has on ectopic beats, particularly in postmenopausal women. So I did some reading and I found something very interesting and I thought I'd share that with you. Um, so the, the title is Magnesium and Ectopic Heartbeats. And in essence, um, <clears throat> there's a few things to know about magnesium. Okay, magnesium is undoubtedly beneficial for the heart. The problem is that the role is underplayed because there are no randomized double blind placebo control studies, you know, big studies. And, the, and uh, these days there's a lot of focus on uh, practicing evidence-based me medicine and there is an automatic assumption that if there is absence of proof, then that equates to proof of absence, i.e. if a study hasn't been done, that it means that it's not beneficial. Um, if a study doesn't demonstrate that something is beneficial, even though it may not have been done, then you then uh, people assume that because there is no evidence, then it, it isn't recommended. Um, however, there are lots of things that may be beneficial, uh, which haven't undergone rigorous clinical evaluation. And I suspect magnesium is one of those things, okay? There's lots of so, observational studies, there's lots of uh, um, retrospective studies, there's lots of population studies which have shown that um, the, uh, magnesium is beneficial for the heart. It reduces atherosclerosis, uh, which is hardening of the arteries. It reduces inflammation, which is the key factor in the development of um, heart attacks. It reduces arrhythmias, and it also reduces sudden death. Okay. Now, there was a very interesting study um, by in the, published in the American Society of Clinical Nutrition in 2002, uh, which I came across. And basically, uh, <clears throat> this was a study that was published by Cleve and Milne. Okay. Uh, and what they did was they took 29 postmenopausal women, um, and what they did was they did a double uh, what they did was a double blind crossover study. So basically, what they did was they took these women, they gave them an ordinary diet, ordinary as in the kind of diet we all eat, uh, but which they recognized was probably deficient in enough magnesium. They then randomized them to two groups, and they gave one group just the diet, and plus a placebo tablet, and the other group this diet with magnesium supplementation. And they followed these people up for 81 days, and they did uh, halter monitors on them um, um, towards the end of the 81 days to see whether there's an increase in ectopic heartbeats. And because it was a crossover study, after the 81 days, they took them off and they switched them over. So the group that wasn't getting uh, the magnesium uh, supplementation was then given the magnesium supplementation. And the idea behind a crossover study is it, it sort of doubly confirms your point. Um, if 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 you you know if you feel that uh, magnesium plays a role in uh, ectopics. And so what they did then was they measured the magnesium concentrations. They measured the magnesium concentrations in the red blood cells, they measured the magnesium in the urine, and they measured the magnesium in blood, okay? And so what they found was very interesting, okay? The first thing they found that if you give a population of women, postmenopausal women, a diet which they may think is ordinary, so because I've looked, if you look at the study, you'll find that the diet doesn't look anything out of the ordinary. It's the kind of stuff we all eat. If you give them that diet and you leave them on that diet without supplementary magnesium for 81 days, when you measure their magnesium levels in the blood, in the serum, it doesn't seem to have gone down. But actually, the amount of magnesium the person is excreting in his urine and the amount of magnesium in the red blood cells is diminished. 
And this is important because it tells you that you can't really rely on the blood test when it measures magnesium, because most of the magnesium in the body is bound in the red cells and in the bones. And therefore, you can be magnesium deficient, yet have a relatively normal magnesium level on the blood test. They also then found that when you follow these patients up after 81 days, the number of ectopic heartbeats they get approximately doubles. So it goes up by about 100 ectopic beats per day, which is significant, which is a noticeable difference for patients. And um, <clears throat> if you supplement the magnesium, then, the, then you don't see as many ectopics. So this is really good data. Um, which tells us that um, you know magnesium may play a really valid role in uh, the propagation or the increase in ectopic heartbeats. Um, remember the uh, current recommendations with regards to um, magnesium supplementation is that you should be taking about 320 to 400 milligrams magnesium per day. And most of us are taking in about 175 to 200, which is far too low. And therefore, um, the general recommendation now is that you should try and really, really um, concentrate on um, how much magnesium you're taking in, try and uh, eat less processed food, eat more leafy vegetables, uh, and uh, if need be, even think about using magnesium supplementation if necessary to try and get the magnesium levels up. It um, is a cofactor in more than 300 enzymes in the body. It certainly affects heart irritability and correcting your magnesium may be one significant way of improving those ectopics that are bothering you so much. So I hope this you've, you found this useful. Um, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. And you can get in touch with me on this website. A lot of uh, people have asked me if um, I could speak to them over the phone. And certainly you can, you can get, if you go onto this website, there are options by which you can contact me. And I do try and get in touch. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. And I'm also on Facebook. Uh, so thank you for listening. I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.